Hi guys, welcome to my podcast. My name is Nicole and I'm the brains and the beauty behind Yarn Craft by Nicole. Today on this lovely, relatively warm day here in Michigan, I've got on my rancher shawl. This is a Tunisian TL Yarn Crafts pattern. Came out kind of at the end of last year and I love it. It does curl a little bit more at the bottom, but that's a Nicole issue and not a pattern issue because I definitely bound off a little bit too tightly. Um, but I really like this. It's a uh, very beginner friendly. It looks a lot more complicated than it is because she's very creative in the way that she designed the fade to work. I believe that the pattern calls for 12 mini skeins. I think that's right. I used eight, but uh, mine is a smidge smaller and the yardage in my minis was a little bit more than a lot of minis have. So I love this. Um, I sometimes forget the name of this pattern because I just think about this as my library wrap because this is the Frosted Stitches Library Collection minis and I love it. Um, I think today is the first day that I've worn it to work and uh, got a lot of compliments on it today, so I really liked it. And I also wasn't sure how well it would work with orange underneath and kind of digging it. Usually I would pair something like this with a dark neutral or maybe even like one of these colors or even a white, but I was like, mm, feeling a little spicy today. So I threw this on with my like army green converse and felt real cute all day. So this is the rancher shawl. The original pattern also calls for tassels. I decided to make mine without tassels because I know myself and I know that um, I would just catch the tassels on something and then rip them off. And so I was like, meh, not really gonna worry about that, but I really like it. Okay, I've got a lot of fun things to show you. I think only one of them is finished, so. And it's kind of not even finished. If you recall last week, I was making gorgeous little granny squares. Um, they were sunburst granny squares. So I, I used up all the yarn I wanted to use. I made 16. I blocked them all before I seamed them together. And um, then I put a border on around them. So let me show you how that came out. Look at how cute it is. Um, this one is my favorite square, so I put it in the middle. This is my other favorite, so I put it close by. But I really liked this. Um, this used sport weight minis. I just went on to Pinterest and found a starburst, I'm um, sorry, not starburst, sunburst pattern that I could do pretty easily and um, seamed them together. I did not do a join as you go. One of these days I'll do a join as you go, but I kind of I wanted them all to look very random and I didn't really want a border that went all around them. And then I did do a border around the finished, um, all of them seemed together. My favorite border, which is a single crochet row, double crochet row, single crochet, reverse single crochet. Um, so I really liked this. I talked to my sister who does some woodworking and she agreed that it would be very cute for her to make a frame for this to go in. Um, so that's the plan, but she won't be able to do that for a couple months. So it'll be a while before I get this framed, but it's really cute. And now I want to dive into all of my, um, scraps and make other versions of this because sometimes I feel like when I want to make a scrappy project, I think about, well, I just have to use all of the scraps that I have in one project to get rid of them so that they're done. So they're out of the way. Um, or have something that, like I think this is the only one that I have right now that I'll just add to it along and along. But um, I really like just picking out coordinating sport weight or fingering weight or DK or anything that go together, that makes sense together um, and just using up what you have for a smaller project. So I'm a fan, I really like this. Um, I have some ideas for other ones that I wanna make too, which is nice. Okay, that's the only thing that's finished. And like I said, it's not even truly finished because it doesn't have a frame yet. Um, and I haven't decided, in my in my mind, I was thinking just an open frame and then hooking this in. But my husband, who is very smart and thinks, I don't know, three or four steps ahead of me usually, was like, don't you want something to protect it from sun bleaching? I'm like, maybe, maybe I do. Because they're just, they're such happy colors. I want to protect the colors, so. We'll see if I decide to opt for glass or if I just scotch guard it. I don't know. Let me know what you do if 
you want, if you do any like wall hangings or tapestries, let me know what you do. Cause I know that my mom quilts and she puts up um, wall hangings sometimes and they're not in any kind of a case, but neither here nor there. This is my finished object. I've got some exciting whips to show you. So let's see. Next up, I guess I'll show you the flat iron shawl. I got into my second color, which is awesome. Look. Um, this is another Tony Lipsy pattern, another TL Yarn Crafts pattern. I really like this. It's all like, so far it's been single crochet, like all of it. And so what's doing the work in this is the pretty yarn that goes along with it. So this is a nice beginner friendly pattern. If you have invested in some yarn, but you're like, Ooh, I don't want to mess it up. Um, this uses three different colors, technically four, three and a mini of um, fingering weight yarn. So I'm into the second color, which I really love. I mean, look at that. It's beautiful. This blue with the little bit of speckles it was called Fall from Grace. And then this color is called Grumpy Sunshine. Um, they are from Coast to Coast Yarns. And then the last color that I have, I'll be finishing it with is this pretty guy um, called Chosen One. This was part of her book tropes collection. I like books. I like books, but I don't have much time for books as I used to. So I need to make space in my room for, make space in my life for more books if I enjoy book themed yarn as much as I do. Um, and I haven't decided how I want to finish it. If I want to do what I originally thought I would do and save enough of this yarn to do a border, um, or if I want to get a cream to edge it off. My one concern with doing a cream is that I'm afraid it's going to look old fashioned, like old fashioned lace just tacked onto the end of it. And I don't want it to look old fashioned. So, I haven't quite decided how I want to end it. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe a navy. Or maybe I'll just be good and save enough of this. Now I do have, or the, um, ugh, this color. I do have um, some blue left and I thought about doing it in the blue. That might happen. I don't know. I haven't decided, but I'm really enjoying it so far. And then my next one, hmm, what do I want to end on? I guess I'll do, I'll do the sweater next. So if you recall, I've been doing a, a very modified version of the Lacombe sweater from Nomad Stitches. I was using my Hue Loco minis on that. And um, I ran myself out of the minis. So I just, um, I think when I talked to you last week, I had ordered yarn from Hue Loco to finish it. I think it'll be enough yarn, <laughs> we'll see. But I split for the body. Look at it, it's so pretty. Um, I tried it on because I'm doing such a modified version of this. The counts for like how many stitches to do on the back before chaining to go under the arms and so on was a little off. So I did have to do a little bit of, um, I don't know, kind of measuring as I went, but I really enjoy this. And what I really like, if you can see at the bottom, um, it, the texture on that is just really pretty. So I'm very excited about this. Um, now that it's at the point where it's try onable, I <laughs> like every time that I work, for, you know, an hour or whatever while I'm watching TV on it. Like at the end of the episode, I'll, I'll go try it on real quick and just kind of see, see what it looks like, even though it's grown, you know, maybe that much. Um, but I'm really enjoying it. I bought four skeins of the snowshoe color, um, this creamy color at the bottom. I really like the way that this looks on. Um, yeah, I'm just a fan. So I am finished. I'm doing this for the Midwest Craft Con, and um, that's at the end of March. So this part, the body and the sleeves, should go relatively quickly because there aren't, they're not complicated like all the top part was. So I feel pretty good about where I am and being able to finish it in time. So um, that should all be good, but I really, I really like the way that this looks and it feels very special and it feels, 
feels kind of fun to take something that I really liked, um, the design of, like I love the original Legome sweater. I think it's very pretty, um, but tweaking it to make it work for the yarn that I had, like, I don't know, I think it's cool. Um, and I bought, this is the, this is what the yarn looks like. If I can get it to focus on that and have the color correct, um, called Snowshoe. And it's very, very soft. Um, yeah, like, I'm gonna go back over here. If I ended it with this cream, like after using this color and using the cream, it could work. I'm just afraid it's gonna look a bit oily. So I think I've talked myself out of doing the cream at the end. The last project um, that I've got going, I do have a scrappy corner to corner blanket. Um, that was kind of mindless that I worked on this weekend. Um, so I like that, but it's, I mean, it looks very similar to the corner curl blank I showed you last time. Um, I'm trying to make that one pretty big as like a throw size blanket. I think that's the plan, but to eliminate all of my acrylic worsted scraps is the true goal. But that one, I probably won't finish before we move, but I'll have used up all these like, anyway. I'll talk about it more next week. The other thing I've been working on is uh, a design of my own. I, whenever I have an idea for a design, there are usually, you know, three or four be bopping around in my head at any time. And when I have one that's like, Nicole, you've got to write this down or you've got to start it because like I get worried that I'll forget how the construction of it's supposed to work or you know whatever or the shape and I just can't if it can't get it out of my head that's when I know I need to start on it so I had an idea for a wrap that um uh, I started on this past week using some yarn I bought when uh, my husband and I were in Italy and I really like working with it <laughs> I'm a little bit nervous about the weight of it because it is I'll show you this is the yarn I'm working with um Suave Pima, and it is a blend of um, new wool, new merino wool, alpaca, and cotton. And it is light as air, like it's super light, but nowhere on this packaging does it <laughs> tell you what the weight is. Um, but I did a wrap test and um, based on like how many grams and how many yards it has. I'm pretty sure it's a sport weight. Um, and I'm using a size G hook, which I usually use for sport weight. But what I think I will do when I'm finished with this is actually get it pattern tested, um, do all my due diligence, do, do gauge, do all the things that I <laughs> don't usually do. Um, and, uh, to make sure that it is correct. So let me show you what it looks like. And then y'all can tell me in the comments if you, what name you think I should use for it. So this is what it looks like so far. So the way that it's going to be worn is um, there'll be two sides that are like this triangle. So this is one end and then it'll be a wrap. So it'll go around and then depending on how much um, length I can get out of it once I block it, um, you could wear it as a wrap, like over a dress, or you could wear it as a scarf. I think it should be long enough to do either way. Um, but I really like the stitch pattern um, with all of these eyelets. And I wasn't sure, because I've never done a wrap like this. I've never done a wrap, never done a wrap period that I designed. Um, and I also, even though I am pretty anti-tassels, like... I don't know, a pom-pom or a tassel at the end could be cute. I don't know yet, but I'm in the kind of repetitive part of it now where it's just straight for a long time. And, um, but it's a fun make because it, um, you have the eyelet rows every, um, I guess that's seven. Yeah, um, seven rows. And then you've got the detail on the end and then when it blocks out, I'm hoping that you'll be able to see, even on the increases, like how you increase it, gives it eyelets on the ends. So having said all that, one, how cute is that gonna be? I mean, 
forget about it. Um, but two, I am struggling with a name for this. Maybe inspiration will hit me the more I continue working on it. The first idea I had was the perforated wrap because it looks like it's perforated. But I'm like, that feels like it is unique. People would be able to find it, I think. But that might be a weird word. It just might be too weird. And then I thought maybe um, the ladder eyelet wrap because it kind of looks like a ladder. I'm like That's kind of a mouthful. Meh. And so my favorite idea so far is um, the honeymooner wrap because I bought this yarn in Italy when um, my husband and I went this past year, but originally we were going to go um, to Italy on our honeymoon. So um, we kind of had a, <laughs> a two year late honeymoon. So I thought about kind of calling it the honeymoon wrap and I thought that would be very, very romantic. Um, one, I need to make sure that there isn't one already called that. Um, and two, to make sure that I like it. So if you have any ideas for names of this, let me know in the comments below. Um, I'm really digging it. I think it's gonna be really pretty. Um, I'm excited to see how this one works up. I am using three balls of this total. Each one of these balls has two, 246 meters. So, I mean, having roughly 750 meters should be able to give me the amount of um, length that I want, but, um, you know, you never know until you work it out. So that is, that is a project that's making me really happy. Honestly, honestly, all of them are making me really happy, um, which is nice when all your projects make you happy. I kind of have to remind myself to switch <laughs> after like, oh, right, you haven't touched this project, you know, the past couple of days, like switch into your rotation. So I really like that. Um, the only new yarn that I've gotten is this yarn that I got for my um, Legome sweater, which I think is beautiful. I'm very pumped about that. Um, I'll probably buy some more over the next couple of weeks. Um, there's at least one more baby blanket um, that I know that I need to make. So anyway, um, that is all that I have for you this week. I hope that you've had a great week. Um, for Oh, the other thing I'm going to tell you is I have been playing around with um, blog stuff and figuring out how to um, put together a website, which is about as much work as it sounds. Like it's a decent amount of work to figure out how to get everything uh, smooth and lined up. So if you have any ideas for a blog post that you would like to see, let me know in the comments below. It's been fun to work on that. It's very much out of my wheelhouse, um, but I, I'm, I'm proud of the work I've done on that. So that's good. Um, what I cannot let go of this week is, is like creepy uh, TV shows and honestly creepy podcasts. I like um, crime and, <laughs> I don't like crime. I like crime podcasts and movies and things that have an interesting story. And I've watched a lot of really good stuff recently. Um, Inside Man on Netflix was very dark, um, very dark. But very good. Um, I liked I liked that one a lot. That one kept me guessing the whole time. And then I watched um, what was it called? Echoes, which is also on Netflix. And that one was weird um, and very outlandish, <laughs> just very bizarre. And then I have a couple of podcasts that I really like, like My Favorite Murder, that I'm going through the back catalog of. And like I I realized that days when I have done too much of that when that has been the primary content that I have been listening to or watching it's like creeping myself out and just remembering to take space and to um, put good things in as well and not just dwell on what's interesting but also dwelling on what's good and what's wholesome so that's why I can't let go of this week trying to do a better job of balancing the content that goes in I hope you have a great weekend ahead of you and um, I will see you right back here next week. Bye guys.